Hello and welcome back to Creative Instruct. In today's tutorial, we're going to cover some of the fundamentals, really important things that you need to know in order to become a graphic designer, web visual designer, or UI designer. And the things uh, we're going to look at is number one, how computers interpret images, yeah? how computers manage to draw the images, because there's two different ways a computer will process and understand the image and uh, we really need to know how to make the difference over here. Number two, we're going to look at shapes, paths, vectors, how you can work in Figma with anchor points and create the artwork that you need or that you want. And this is really important when you're going to create icons, illustrations. So do stick around if you want to have some solid fundamentals on this. And number three, we're going to look in uh, some ideas on how you can exercise with vectors in order to improve your skills. This tutorial is for beginners. I'm going to go at a slower pace than usual. So do feel free to continue watching if you're interested. Okay. That being said, let's just jump into Figma. And you're going to see that I have two images over here. Well, you might say, no, there's the same image, but you duplicated that image. You have it like two times. No, those are quite different. And in order for you to see, I'm just going to select both of them. And from the properties panel, I'm going to enlarge the size. Yeah, I'm going to uh, make sure that the width and height are constrained. And I'm going to make it three times the actual size, so 600 by 450. Automatically, you see that there are some differences. If I would zoom in, yeah, I can see the first image has these jagged edges. It's a bit pixelated, fuzzy. So we can say that it dropped from the initial quality, while the image on the right, well, it's as sharp as ever. Those images weren't the same from the very beginning. That's why you have uh, different results. And in order for you to better understand, let's look over here. The first type of format yeah, that computers use is, uh, is the raster or the bitmap format. And files commonly known as raster images are PNG, JPG files, GIFs. How the raster format is interpreted, yeah, is understood by your computer is as follows. The computer will create this matrix of dots, of pixels, and in each dot he will mark what kind of pixel it has. Is it transparent? Is it a dark pixel, red pixel, and so on. So that image was created at an initial fixed width and height. And those could be the images that come from your camera. Now, when you try to enlarge that image, the computer can only try to approximate the result. It will have some algorithms. It will look at the neighbor pixels and try in this new projection to land those pixels as close as possible to what he thinks is the accurate result, the result that you're after. And oftentimes the results are not perfect. Do pay attention to this because if you would send uh, this type of image to a printer, you want uh, to have a high resolution image in order to get decent or quality uh, results. The other way the computer looks at an image is the vector format. Common uh, vector files are SVGs, AIs, EPS. If you worked with Illustrator, you might have heard of AI um, or EPS type of files. Now, SVG stands for scalable vector graphic and it's a very popular format on the internet. Many icons or the resources that you're going to export and share with the developers need to be SVG files. Okay. Now in SVG, the computer only knows a couple of points and has an equation behind that makes him understand how to connect those points, Yeah, how, how to convey the image that you want. And in this case is the image of a heart. And when you try to scale this type of image, the computer just moves those points, assigns new values yeah, new parameters and runs again that equation. So it has 
a high degree in terms of accuracy and precision. Why is this important? Because you need to be able to manipulate points and create the desired paths and shapes in your day-to-day -day job, okay? So a bit of theory now for us to have the same understanding of what we're about to see. Uh, paths or vectors are basically those lines that appear between the points or anchor points, yeah, if you want the complete name. And in order to have a path, you need to have at least two points. It makes sense. If you only have one point, then okay, nothing will be drawn. It's not that helpful to us. The way you can look at paths is either open or closed paths. When we have open paths, we deal with lines. And when we have closed paths, meaning that the path comes back to the point of origin where I started drawing that path, then we have a shape. There's a clear difference between lines and shapes. Lines will support only a stroke property, a stroke color, a stroke weight, style, while a shape, because it's an enclosed space, it will also support a fill property. And you can have a solid color fill or a gradient fill. Now, another way to look at uh, paths is either straight, curved, and sometimes mixed, yeah, because in nature we don't have perfectly straight forms. I was mentioning that they're uh, made up of points, yeah, and we're gonna deal with uh, straight angle points, and they can be selected and moved at any time to redraw, to adjust the path you create. Um, and sometimes you're going to see that the points generate these handlebars, yeah, these handles. Basically, those dictate on how the path arrives into that point and how it looks when it leaves that point. Yeah, the path will be tangent to the handle. Okay, so let's just open a new document and try to practice a bit. The tool to go when I work with Vector is the pen tool and it's up here. And this tool is present also in Photoshop, Illustrator, other applications that are geared to uh, authoring uh, vector art and uh, digital graphics. Yeah, um, It works different from the pencil or from a brush. Yeah? If I would go with a pencil, uh, I can just click and start dragging and it will draw this line, similar to what happens when you're writing on a piece of paper yeah so that's why it's easy to understand by most of us out there but it's quite um, difficult to control and to have that precision and perfect geometry that you want so let's stick with the pen for now i'm gonna select the pen to come here uh, on the canvas and i'm just gonna zoom in yeah to zoom in i just press the z key and execute click or if i want to zoom out i hold the z and alt Click again to zoom out, yeah, left click, or control and using the scroll wheel. And if I want to pan around to, to move, I can press space yeah, and move around. I don't need to go up here to the tools every time. I'm going to use my keyboard uh, shortcuts. How the pen tool works, guys, I just need to click once to set my first point, the origin point. And over here in the layers, you can already see that Figma tries to create a vector, or we let Figma know, hey, I'm gonna create a vector, or path, their synonym. And I'm gonna move to the right and click again to set my second point, second anchor point. At this moment, I have my first path, which looks like a straight line. Then I can continue, move up, click, move down and click. So just by setting a couple of points, I will get a nice result, yeah, uh, I will draw my path. In order to confirm, because now I'm in editing mode, I'm editing the path, I can just press enter or double click on the last point and I will see this blue border around um, the element I created. Okay, if I want to access it again, I want to take the move tool and double click somewhere on the path and it will give me access to my points. So I uh, can control them individually by hovering, clicking and dragging, 
yeah, or just clicking and using the arrow keys on your keyboard. Uh, I was saying they're not set in stone. You always have uh, the option to go back and adjust or edit that path. I can click and drag to select multiple points at once. I can move them all together. You can see how flexible it is. I'm going to press enter again to exit the path editing mode. And I'm going to try now to draw a curved path. So let's take the pen tool yeah, and move somewhat down here. I'm going to set the first point again, yeah, the origin point. I'm going to move to the right. And now when I click, I drag. When I drag, yeah, so I don't let go of the mouse button immediately. When I drag, I start to see uh, those nice handles and my path bending. Yeah, it makes this nice elastic curve. Now, we have the left handlebar, this one goes up in uh, the, this case, and the right handlebar goes down. Now, it comes tangent yeah, to the handlebar. It just touches that handlebar uh, slightly. And the right handlebar kind of points me in the direction where I want to go next, anticipates that, hey, probably your next point is going to be somewhere up there or down here. Yeah. Why I'm saying that? Because it's a bit hard and it's a bit counterintuitive to move in the opposite direction. Okay, so let's set the second anchor point. And again, I'm going to click and drag and I get these nice handlebars. Okay, I'm gonna make the fourth point and again click and drag. So every time I have these nice handles to control the curve, guys, the pen just works differently. You need to practice a bit with it. Now I can continue and make a simple click, and this time I just clicked. Yeah, I, I didn't drag. And when this happens, you can see. It's free now. I can continue editing uh, this path, but I will go with a straight line. Yeah, because it doesn't have the second handle, the right handle. So I can click again here. And just like that, I have that mixed path. Yeah, it's made up of curved lines and uh, straight lines. Okay, to confirm, I can just hit enter. Okay. If I would want to come back and edit this path, let's say I'm not happy with it, or I would want to add to it to continue, take the move tool, come over it and just double click the path. Okay, and you will see your points, yeah, you have access. I can select the last anchor point, come up here, get the pen tool and continue. Yeah, so that's, if I exited the path, I will come back to that path, select the point from which I want to continue. I can also continue from this one. I select that one, hit the P on my keyboard and continue. Okay. There's another powerful tool and that's the band tool. For example, I'm on this one and it has straight anchor points. Yeah, no curves as you see, but I can choose the band tool. Yeah, over here for you to see it and position myself over one of the points. And by clicking and dragging, you're going to see that the handlebars appear. OK, uh, and, and that's nice. You know, I was mentioning those are not set in stone. They can be edited at any time. Or if it's a curved anchor point and I want to convert it to a straight anchor point with the band tool, I just need to click once on that one. Okay, another interesting thing that you need to know is how to work with those handlebars at the left and right. And you can see when I pull one of them, it applies the same force and the same angle, yeah, but in the opposite direction. That's because over here on the right, I have the option selected of mirroring the angle and length. But let's try to mirror only the angle and see what's happening. I'm going to mirror the angle and this time, yeah, I can see that the angle is mirroring, but I can apply a different force. Uh, I, I can go further or closer with each handlebar. Now, when you work with the handles, don't go too far away because it's going to be hard for you to control them. And last option is no mirroring. And 
what no mirroring does makes those uh, handle bars work uh, individually without them knowing of each other okay i would say that's plenty for a uh, quick overview on uh, on paths and how we create paths let's uh, continue and look into some common path operations okay and the common operations the things that you need to be able to perform with paths yeah, except creating them and marking the points is joining them and yeah, when you have two separate paths but you want them to connect then flattening them when the paths are on uh, different vectors yeah they're in different spaces but you want to bring them in the same space in order to work with them together maybe a join operation split when you have a path and you want to interrupt that path and then outline and that's interesting tra transforming a path a shape so let's have a quick look taking the pen tool now uh, i'm gonna create again a new path very simple path just by marking a couple of points and then i can press enter okay and i can go back again taking the pen tool and continuing from somewhere over here let's see okay that's that's an interesting experiment. Now, you can see they're on the same element, they're on the same vector. So if I would double click any of those uh, paths, which you might think they're separate, I access the same uh, object. Yeah, all the points get highlighted. So now if I would wanna join those two endings, I can select them, go to the Figma menu, vector and say join selection you can also make try to make a smooth joint selection this applies when you're dealing with the curved anchor points so just by hitting join selection i have them now together that's really uh really nice if i would try for example to connect this one and i'm gonna make a selection over it holding shift to connecting with the last one yeah, again I can try to say vector join and it will try to find the quickest way to uh, merge those two together that's really nice that's the the power of of joining those okay but this won't work if you have the vectors yeah the paths oh, in separate spaces what do I mean by that look I'm gonna take the pen tool, draw a new vector. I'm gonna confirm, then I'm doing something else and coming back again, taking the pen tool and making a, a new path, okay? Well, one of them is called vector two and one of them is called uh, vector three. This, yeah, if I double click, I only see the points on one or the other. Uh, other one so I need to flatten them I'm gonna select both of those paths right click and say flatten now they're only one element yeah if I would double click now I have access to all the points so I can join those points down here Okay, that's something for you to know. Now let's try to do a split. Let's say that I want to interrupt this one somewhere here. I can position myself yeah, over it and I have this new point. If I hover yeah, in the middle of this segment, I can click add a new point. And now if I press backspace, I manage to split that path. Yeah, and it will go, it will stop to its nearest neighbors. You can experiment by adding and moving the points. Yeah, I can add just by clicking a new point, click and drag to move it. Then another point in the middle. Now, if I select this one, you can press delete or backspace. See, it interrupts the path, but it stops at the nearest neighbors. Okay, now last thing I, I need to tell you is the outline. Imagine that we have a new path. Okay, and let's make it uh, like a curved path. 
Okay, to this path, I said I cannot add a fill, yeah, because paths don't support fills. I can try, I can click, but nothing will change. I can work with the stroke color, the stroke width. Now, if I'm going with zero for the stroke, you might say it disappeared. No, guys, it's still there. I'm gonna select it, go back to one. It's just that you made uh, an invisible stroke. You applied like a, a invisible stroke. So I cannot add any any type of uh, fill to this. Yeah, unlike with the shape, if I would have a shape, let's make a very simple triangle. I'm going back to the origin point. Well, with this one, I can actually add a fill. Yeah, I was saying this is the difference between shapes and paths. Okay, I'm gonna select my path and executing a right click, I can say outline the stroke. And by outlining the stroke, yeah, let me do that again. I'm gonna right click and say outline. Yeah, that path became a shape. Yeah, if I would try now to double click, see where my points are positioned, this, what initially was a stroke, became a fill. Okay, we've seen a couple of examples on working with paths. Now, let's look at shapes, common operations with shapes. Again, I'm, I'm just gonna uh, start with a very simple uh, uh, circle down here. I'm gonna create a circle. See, Figma also has this custom of shapes. I, I don't need to use the uh, pen tool every time. Then. I can create a rectangle on, on top of this one. I would like to give them different colors for you to easily distinguish. So by clicking and changing the fill, I'm gonna perform this operation. Okay, let's position them on top of each other. So down I have the ellipse, my circle, and then I have this rectangle or this square. Okay, by selecting both of them, going up here, I can tell them to create a union. And in this case, now in the layers panel, it shows me that I created a union and inside the union, I have rectangle and an ellipse. So if I would double click on the union, it will expand, show me the shapes I have inside till I would be able to work with them uh, individually. Uh, but what about if I would want to create, uh, I would want to subtract. Now let's go back to the initial example. And I'm gonna create, uh, select those two. And I would say, well, subtract. Subtract does exactly that. It takes out the uh, part that was uh, occupied by the shape on top and just leaves me the base shape, the one Figma sees uh, at the bottom. Okay, then slightly different is intersect. Intersect is the opposite of subtract. So it looks uh, at the most top shape, sees what overlaps with the down below, with the shape below, and uh, renders out only that part that intersects. And the last one, well, that's like exclude. Exclude, basically, hey, if something is overlapping, remove it. Yeah, make a union, but remove whatever is overlapping okay. again you need a bit of practice and a bit of exercise to get the idea with uh, those operations now really interesting i could try to let's say duplicate those um, by pressing ctrl c ctrl v or command c command v if you're on a mac now i would like to um, create first a union because yeah, I have too many uh, rectangles and shapes here so it can come a bit confusing I just want to select yeah by holding shift and clicking on each individual rectangle selecting all of them and make them into a union and now they're seen as a single element when I click shift and also select the ellipse or that circle I have down there I perform a, a subtract, yeah, 
what happened. It looked at the top shape and uh, at the bottom shape and perform that subtract. So sometimes you can get really interesting uh, results. Intersect again will behave differently. This is quite cool guys um, because you can experiment and get all sorts of interesting graphics, interesting uh, results and really get up to speed with how shapes look at each other and understand their uh, relationships uh, among themselves. Well, if you're still here, feel free to uh, give a like and subscribe. That will help the channel and other people learn about graphic design and UI design. And just before I go, I do want to leave you with a couple of exercises or some ideas on how you can practice to get better with paths and shapes. So I'm, I'm back in Figma and I might have an image uh, and I'm just focusing on getting an object uh, from that image and I would like the rest of the image to be masked. We're going to talk about masks also in other tutorials, but the way I would do that is basically trying to create a shape around the object that I want and then to use that shape in creating a mask. How do we do that? I'm going to take the pen tool and I'm going to start, I'm going to zoom in, I, I want to be quite precise, I'm going to start somewhere up here, doesn't matter. And I'm going to try to set up some points that will follow yeah, the object. So by clicking and dragging, because this is a round object, I, I was mentioning we don't have perfect objects around us yeah, I'm just creating those uh, paths which you see here and the focus of the exercise is to end up uh, with this path in a shape so I need to get back to that origin point where, where I started now if you place uh, one point yeah, on the outside just use the keys, yeah, the arrows to move it a bit more in or out. And again, if you're doing this uh, type of activity, it's called tracing for the first time, you might not get it uh, perfect, though we don't aim uh, for perfection. Another thing you might want to keep in mind is that uh, if accidentally you're uh, deselecting your double clicking or pressing enter when you will come back yeah you need to select the last point and continue from from there because we want our path to to be continuous we don't want an interrupted path because then we won't get a shape as an end result i'm just gonna go a bit faster over here guys but this is all that you you need to do you just need to try and be as close as possible to the object that you want to mask yeah, so i'm gonna create this nice custom shape and come up here yeah, in order to close the shape exactly where I started and feel free to use as many points as you need and of course inspect them I'm using the space bar to uh, and clicking the left mouse button to move around and then control and the scroll wheel to zoom in and out now when you're happy uh, with with your shape apply a fill uh, it will look a bit weird, but then you need to go to your layers panel and position this new uh, shape that you created yeah, behind the image you want to mask. Now, by clicking shift and selecting both of them, perform a right click and say use as mask. And just like that, you can see that 
my image is now a mask and I only have uh, the ball, the, the object I was interested in. Of course, you can do this with other images that you find uh, online. For example, this plant could be a bit more challenging and I'm not talking about the flower pot because this one has uh, straight lines but the leaves of the plant, yeah, they go and have all these kind of curves. That's a bit more of a challenge. I'll leave it up to you. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.